It's just been announced that evidence of a possible wormhole has opened up at Skinwalker Ranch. Photographs have been shared by the team who are currently investigating Skinwalker Ranch and its anomalies. For those unaware, the Skinwalker Ranch, which is situated in the Uintar Basin in northeastern Utah, is an intriguing location, enveloped in tales and enigmas. It is commonly referred to as Sherman Ranch, and over the years, various individuals have come forward with strange reports, many of whom have detailed strange wormholes opening up in the sky and noting that they witnessed objects flying through them. This 480-acre property is known for its association with various phenomena such as mysterious aircrafts, strange entity encounters, mysterious livestock expirations, patterns formed in crops, and the presence of skinwalkers. Additionally, the ranch shares a border with the Ute Indian Reservation. The Ute were granted the Winter Valley Reservation in October 1861 through President Abraham Lincoln's executive order. In January 1882, the Uncompahgre Reservation, also known as the Ore Reservation, was established and later merged with the Winter Reservation in 1886, resulting in the creation of the Winter and Ure Reservation. This reservation has served as the home for the Ute for over 150 years, spanning over 4.5 million acres of land. For many years, the indigenous people have spoken about how the neighboring ranch lies on the path of the skinwalker, and as a result, they have been strictly prohibited from approaching the property. The skinwalker refers to a malicious creature who can change shape, and the Ute people regard this figure with great reverence. The Ute tribe inhabited regions such as Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico before they relocated to the reservation. They were known for their fierce and warlike nature. In the past, the Ute and Navajo tribes joined forces to resist their shared adversaries. However, when the Ute tribe acquired horses from the Spanish, they started taking Navajo individuals and selling them in markets located in New Mexico. During the Civil War, certain Ute groups joined forces with Kit Carson in a military operation against the Navajo, which resulted in the Navajo being expelled from their territories and compelled to march to the Fort Sumner Reservation in New Mexico known as the Long Walk of the Navajo. Although the Navajo tribe was eventually allowed to return to their ancestral lands in the Four Corners region, the Ute community held the belief that the Navajo had placed a curse on them for their past offences. As a consequence, the Ute people started experiencing disturbances caused by the skinwalkers. The Ute people have a long-standing belief in the existence of skinwalkers, and these tales have been passed down for over 15 generations. However, they do not hold the belief that skinwalkers reside on the ranch. Instead, they believe that skinwalkers seek refuge in a nearby location known as Dark Canyon. Based on reports, skinwalkers have been frequently observed by the Ute people in the region. These beings have been sighted near the ranch, along the road to Fort Duchesne, and in different parts of the reservation. One description paints them as human-like creatures with dog heads, while others have described them as being more wolf-like. Another account depicts them as big, black, hairy humanoids with remarkable speed. Witnesses have also claimed that these entities possess unusually large and intimidating red eyes. Additionally, there are reports of people encountering and capturing photographs of substantial footprints believed to be left behind by skinwalkers. The Myers family settled on the ranch in 1905. Initially, there were a few small buildings on the northwest corner of the ranch, located at the base of Skinwalker Ridge. Eventually, the original homestead was deserted and a new residence was established on the eastern side of the ranch. From the 1930s until 1987, Kenneth John Myers and his wife Edith Myers resided on the property. Although no unusual incidents were reported by the Myers themselves during their time there, some of their neighbours did have experiences worth noting. During the 1950s, a series of peculiar incidents started happening in the basin. There were multiple accounts of unidentified objects observed above the property, and these sightings persisted for several decades. It is worth noting that this wasn't the initial occurrence of unusual aircraft sightings. The earliest documented mention of such sightings goes back to the late 1700s, when Spanish explorers, who were in search of the Spanish trail, passed through the basin and reported observing strange crafts hovering above their nightly campfires. The reports of unidentified objects were numerous, 
with descriptions ranging from fireballs to aircraft of different sizes and shapes, including round, oval, cigar-shaped and triangular. Some of these objects were enveloped in a green glow, while others emitted red beams or displayed colored lights from underneath. The influx of calls became so overwhelming for the Utah Highway Patrol that by the 1970s, reports were no longer filed. Additionally, local ranchers also reported unusual instances of cattle expirations during the same period. Joseph Hicks, a retired science teacher hailing from Roosevelt, Utah, delved into over 400 reported sightings in the basin and uncovered an intriguing correlation between these sightings and instances of cattle expirations. Throughout his research, Hicks documented numerous accounts from eyewitnesses who claimed to have observed living beings inside these objects through the windows or portholes. In 1994, Terry and Gwen Sherman became the new owners of the ranch that had been left vacant by the Myers since 1987. They were taken aback to discover deadbolt locks on every door and window, both inside and outside the house. The kitchen cabinets were not spared either, as they also had bolts on them. Additionally, iron stakes and heavy chains were found at both ends of the house, presumably used by the previous occupants for their large guard dogs. The Shermans, accompanied by their two children and livestock, decided to make this property their new home. On the day the family moved in, they immediately noticed a sizable coyote, or possibly a wolf in one of their fields. It swiftly advanced towards a pen where their livestock was kept. It proceeded to seize a young calf by its nose and attempted to pull it through the bars of the enclosure. Terry Sherman and his father attempted to free the calf by striking the animal, but their efforts proved to be unsuccessful. When their initial attempt was unsuccessful, Sherman resorted to firing at the animal with a magnum from close range. However, despite being fired at multiple times, the wolf carried on gripping the calf. Eventually, after a few more shots, the animal let go of the calf and calmly stared at the men. Surprisingly, there were no visible signs of injury on the animal. In an attempt to understand what had happened, the men pursued the animal's footprints for approximately a mile before they abruptly ceased, as if the animal had mysteriously vanished. This incident served as a hint of what was yet to come. A couple of weeks later, while Gwen Sherman was driving in her car, she came across a sizable wolf that had its back aligned with the top of her window. There was also a canine-like creature accompanying the wolf, but she couldn't determine its exact species. Throughout the following two years, the Shermans and their fellow residents witnessed a variety of unusual creatures within their vicinity. These sightings entailed the presence of vibrant, non-indigenous species, as well as towering, mysterious creatures resembling large humanoids. During an incident, the Shermans witnessed an unusual creature, reminiscent of a hyena, engaging in an attack on one of their horses. The creature was described as having a low stature, substantial muscle mass, weighing around 200 pounds, with red curly fur and a tail. When Mr. Sherman approached the animal, it mysteriously disappeared. Later examination of the horse revealed multiple claw marks on its legs. Several months afterward, a neighboring resident reported seeing a comparable creature dashing across their land. The Shermans, just like their fellow residents, also witnessed unusual luminosities and airborne entities, with over 12 sightings occurring on a single night. It was during these encounters with unidentified objects that they also faced the unfortunate demise or vanishing of seven of their finest livestock. Out of these, four vanished completely, while three others were discovered lifeless. Three of the deceased cows displayed an unusual anomaly, a distinctive void in the middle of the left eyeball, while remaining unscathed otherwise. Another bovine specimen had a comparable aperture in its left eye, accompanied by a significant six-inch cavity, approximately an inch in depth, carved into part of its body. The final cow subjected to this act had been observed alive merely five minutes earlier by the Sherman's son. A particular cow among the missing livestock appeared to have mysteriously vanished from the snowy landscape. Its tracks led into a field, but abruptly ceased. The ground was scattered with snapped twigs and branches, and the tree canopies seemed to have been severed. Throughout this period, a variety of peculiar incidents transpired as well. It was not uncommon for pastures to inexplicably illuminate during the nighttime hours. Furthermore, 
There were reports of audible sounds resembling the workings of heavy machinery emanating from beneath the ground. Poltergeist-like occurrences, such as objects vanishing only to reappear later, were also observed. Additionally, eerie disembodied voices, frequently communicating in an unfamiliar language, were heard from above. Additionally, peculiar patterns of flattened grass, commonly referred to as crop circles, were discovered on the ranch. In May 1996, Sherman experienced a significant event that served as the breaking point. While outside with his three dogs, he noticed a vibrant blue object swiftly moving in the field nearby. Prompted by curiosity, he encouraged his dogs to chase after it. The dogs energetically pursued the object, expressing their excitement through barks until they disappeared into a dense thicket. Sherman was alarmed when he heard three distressing yelps from his pets and realized they were unresponsive to his calls. The following day, when he ventured out to search for them, all he discovered were three spherical, greasy masses with evidence of scorching. Unfortunately, the dogs were never found again. After experiencing these frightening incidents for a period of two years, the family decided to share their story with the public. The initial reports regarding the bizarre occurrences on the ranch were initially published in the Deseret News in Salt Lake City, Utah, followed by a series of articles by journalist George Knapp in the weekly newspaper Las Vegas Mercury. George Knapp and Colm Kelleher later wrote a book that provides a comprehensive account of previous inquiries conducted in the county area regarding reported sightings, incidents involving missing and expired livestock, sightings of large animals possessing piercing red eyes that were unharmed despite being fired at, unseen objects emitting destructive magnetic fields, formations of crop circles, encounters with creatures resembling Bigfoot, and instances of poltergeist phenomena. The Shermans had intentions to sell the property, but before they could do so, they received an unexpected offer from Robert Bigelow, a wealthy businessman and is the founder of the National Institute for Discovery Science. He became interested in buying the property after learning about the events from a newspaper article. Bigelow acquired the ranch for a sum of $200,000, with the condition that the Shermans would not divulge any further details about the incidents that occurred on the property. Subsequently, he initiated the establishment of a comprehensive facility comprising advanced sensory technology, field investigators with doctorate-level qualifications, scientific experts, and round-the-clock security personnel. So, what do you make of Skinwalker Ranch? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.